So news has come through on April Fool's Day of all days that Liberty Media, owners of F1, basically agreed a deal to purchase MotoGP for around $4 billion, euros, pounds, convert to whatever currency you'd like to help yourself understand the scale of it. Uh, of course, it is to purchase an 86% stake of Dorna, which obviously that will doesn't just get the MotoGP. They also get a few other series there, namely the big one as well that comes with it is World Superbikes. So what does this mean? Is it good or bad? Do we want this? Do we not want this? Here's my humble opinion on it all. And of course, this is all subject to the EU competition watchdog will need to have a look at this. And basically, they need to make a decision as to whether or not it is creating a bit of a monopoly for them owning the two biggest uh, motorsport series in the world, which I expect to not be an issue, just because I think for these guys, they wouldn't go down this path this far, agree the deal, announce it, if they didn't have assurances from people who really know this kind of thing, that this was going to be absolutely fine and it will go through no problem. So it's going to look set to be completed at the end of this year. And I've got a lot of notes in no particular order here, so I'm just going to rattle some stuff off and, and sort of probably go off on a couple of tangents here. I'll try and keep this video nice and short for you, though. But generally speaking, I think it's positive. I do think it's a positive thing. I think Liberty Media has done a really good job with F1. Now, I am coming from this perspective of I am a huge F1 fan as well. I'm a big, obviously a big MotoGP fan. And when I look at F1 from before to now, for me, it, it's... It's no different for me. I mean, the racing is the racing. Whether you think it's boring or not at the moment, that's fine. I don't think that has anything to do with them. All the regulations are still governed by the FIA, as will be the case with MotoGP. They can't come in and obviously make changes like that. The FIM covers all that kind of stuff. So they can't just come in tomorrow and be like, everyone has to wear a jet pack and there's going to be six jumps on every circuit. Like, oh, stupid. Like, they can't do things like that. That's just not how it works. But whatever you think of Formula One at the moment, one thing that's undeniable is the growth in that sport somehow has come from attracting fans and viewers that would maybe traditionally not be fans of motorsport. Motorsport has always been a bit of a, I mean, despite the high costs it takes to get involved in motorsport, if you're a young person and you want to get involved in any kind of motorsport, you need money behind you. But it really has always been a kind of a, a grassroots feeling kind of thing. It was just always, I mean, in the early days, it just started as, you know, mechanics and stuff, just throwing cars and bikes together and jumping on them and seeing how well they did. And that's where it sort of come from. And it, and it has always been like that a little bit. But Formula 1, obviously, a long time ago, sort of elevated itself to a kind of a more high-end feeling kind of product with Monaco and, you know, celebrities on the grid and all that stuff. MotoGP has always just kind of remained for the purists kind of thing, for the bikers, you know, for better or worse. And from my perspective, as kind of I consider myself one of those people, I, you know, we're all worried about change and, you know, we like it the way we like it because... It's a bit rough and tumble. It's a bit grassroots. And, you know, we always liked it that way. But the fact is less and less people every generation end up bikers riding. And not that you have to be a rider to enjoy MotoGP. You know, most people probably don't ride bikes who watch MotoGP. But, but yeah, motorsport has always kind of been like a bit rougher. I know in a, like in Australia, come from an Australian perspective, like people watch V8 supercars and stuff. Like I used to do when I was a kid. I was always watching V8 supercars and stuff like that. And it was kind of seen as a kind of a bogan thing to do you know and you kind of just have to be into it that kind of thing or grow up with it otherwise you don't really come into it later in life I don't know but with Formula One they've seemed to trigger in people's mind for people who maybe wouldn't have been interested in this kind of thing before uh, and turn them into loyal fans and when I say that this might not even be people who watch all the races or most of the races or any of the races but they follow a drama on TV, a docu-series or something, and they keep up with the results and just hope that their favorite driver wins and they jump on Twitter and, you know, they argue with Max Verstappen fans or whatever. But the point is, Liberty Media seem to have this way of doing that. They are an American company and their focus is obviously going to be to push into markets that they know, which is what they've done with F1, and push into the US and try and gain more casual fans. The purists, the old school guys, you know, like you or I, who might have been following it for many, many years. We're not going anywhere either way. So look, in my mind, what can be the worst that can happen? They bring in sprint races. It's already been done. They release some cheesy documentaries. MotoGP's already tried that. They're probably just going to do these things, but better, right? Obviously, change can be scary, but I think in this case, we need it because motor motorbikes, and I've got a video about this, like this kind of what's wrong with MotoGP. And I actually generally think MotoGP, MotoGP in my lifetime has been great. And so Dorna, you have to say, is doing a good job. There obviously are issues, and I've made a video about that, which you can watch. But in that video, I do kind of 
talk about the fact that while car racing kind of has this more mainstream appeal, I don't know if bikes will ever have it to that degree, but it can have it to a degree. But bikes always been for kind of the weirdos and the the more extreme sports kind of followers and stuff like that. Whereas though car racing, you can kind of appeal to just kind of everyone, which is what Liberty Media have proven with Formula One, that they can go, no, 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 this isn't just for rev heads and Bogans drinking their VBs up at Mount Panorama. Car racing can just be for, from like your nan to your teenage daughter. Like it can just be for, for whoever, you know, and it can have that appeal. And they've done that by making Formula One less about the tech and the car, that side of things, which you can pick up later if you start following it. You'll get into that. But they've made it about the people and the stories and the drama. And sometimes it is cheesy and over-dramatized, but it's working. It's working. And you know what? You can talk about it, you know, Maybe it is a bit of an Americanization of it. Sometimes with your, you know, I know I come from Australia, we're kind of halfway between America and Europe, I guess, with that kind of thing. But certainly from a European perspective, British, Australian, and that kind of thing, it can come across as a bit cheesy, you know, like I've said. But if this is what US audiences want to see. And, and I feel like it doesn't really matter if it goes a bit that way because you just don't have to watch those bits. Like with me, I don't really watch anything outside of the racing that much when it comes to Formula One and MotoGP. With MotoGP, I listen to a lot of podcasts and things and and I'll watch post-race stuff and all that and a little bit of that with F1. But generally, I just like to watch the racing and then I make my comments on on the videos here. But what this adds and what Liberty Media do well is they add that person who maybe doesn't really care about the racing that much, but they like the drama of it. They watch the interviews. They watch the documentaries. They watch all this stuff and they follow it on TikTok and stuff like that. And that's where I think Liberty Media will expand MotoGP. And look, you're talking about $4 billion upwards here for them to purchase this. This is, we're talking the kind of money that Disney paid for Star Wars. You know, I know that was a long time ago. And if, look, George, if you'd held out there, mate, you probably would have got a lot more. These guys are not buying this because they're buying something that they think is rubbish and they need to completely change. I've just watched an interview here on what was it, on CNBC with the CEO, Liberty Media President and CEO, Greg Maffei. He's saying all the right things. Like he's basically, you know, they're asking him about, you know, the, you know, are you going to look to put an F1 model on it and all this stuff? And he's like, look, the product, it's going to be run separately. Dawn is still going to be in control of the way it's run. It's an independently run organization. They're going to keep it that way, at least for the foreseeable future. And he's basically, you know, and he's saying what a lot, you know, a lot of MotoGP fans have been saying for years is like, the product is incredible. The only problem is not enough people are seeing it. So he's paraphrasing a bit here, but he's just, he basically just made a a mention of how exciting the sport is and how exciting exciting they think the sport is. And obviously they're seeing potential that if you just take what's there and just market it the way Formula One's marketed, people will watch it. And he's right. People will watch it. It is brilliant. MotoGP is one of the best products in world sport for drama, excitement, technology. And if you're impressed by incredible machines, things like that, this stuff is brilliant to watch. I think they're probably just seeing a lot of like shoulder down turning and stuff like that in slow-mo and going, yeah, we can market that. You know, that that's impressive stuff. And look, for now, nothing will change for the foreseeable future. But I can't see them ruining MotoGP. Like, obviously, you're going to get people who are like, oh, it's ruined it for me. There's, it's all cheesy now and it's all American and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, you don't have to consume those parts of it. You can just consume the race on a Sunday, you know, and then you'll still have people like me talking about just racing. I don't really care about drive to survive and shit. I think it is really corny and cheesy. But people love that. People do love it. And, you know, whether that's going to happen, I don't know. They might not do the deal for the Netflix doco or whatever, but I can imagine they probably have that in mind. Like, why wouldn't they? But I think the big thing is going to come through social media. And and that's another thing is, you know, I don't know if this is true or not, but it's a perception I have that, you know, for what I'm doing here and creating this content and stuff, and I do have a copyright strike with, with Dorna um, for one of my videos, which I did straight up just steal their content. So fair enough. But what it seems to me like with the F1 guys, there's probably given a bit more leeway in terms of, usage of of you know and and promoting on social media making your own content i could be wrong so so if there's any f1 guys watching this or who who make videos on youtube or or you make content on instagram or tiktok whatever let me know but dawn has always been very strict with it i can see both sides of it you are creating and producing this content so if anyone wants to use it they need to pay for it i understand that that's your intellectual property and you can charge people to use it like you know that's fair enough you should be getting paid for you know the content you're producing. I understand. From the other side of the coin, if you do let people make stuff with your content and promote it and spread it and do whatever, you're basically just getting free promotion. So, and then your sport is growing 
to a more mainstream audience without you having to spend a dime or a minute of effort to do it. Someone else is doing that for you. So I, there is two perspectives there, but whether Liberty Media sort of loosen the leash a little bit on guys like myself to be able to use their content and stuff like that to, to crack on. I mean, I know that there's been issues, you know, if you follow, I mean, I think most of us, bad Moto GP meme, uh, memes over on Instagram. I know he's had a few issues. I can't remember the gent's name, to be honest. <laughs> sorry, sorry, mate. Um, but I know he's had some issues on Instagram with, with um, stuff being taken down and stuff like that. And he's just making memes and using images mostly. So like that, kind of could be loosened a little bit i think and based on i mean again if you're an f1 content maker let me know if i'm off the mark here but it seems like you guys have a bit more of a allowance to sort of get away with stuff like that because you are spreading the good word you know now things i can see changing for better or worse you may or may not like this is we're definitely going into the us more now at least one more race in the us possibly two when i watched this interview again with this ceo of liberty media he did mention there was no intention to increase the amount of races per season but perhaps increase the amount of races in the US, which means taking races away from someone else. Now, I think that might be the plan for the first two or three years, but once they get a bit of traction and figure out what they're doing with MotoGP, I can 100% seeing this go to 24, 25 races, whether they say it or not, right? Which I've always been a big proponent of the 18 to 20 races is probably premium, probably 18 if I had my choice. But of course, then you can't go to everywhere and you can't give everybody the show and you can't give everybody the spectacle. I think the one way they can achieve that is by removing races from Spain and maybe with the less of the Spanish influence now and more of the American influence, we may see Spain lose a couple of races. But also it is such a big market that it's like, would you throw away that money short term for perhaps the long term goal of going to other places? That's a decision they'll have to make. And the big one, are we getting a joint Grand Prix F1 MotoGP event? I, for one, really do hope we get it i've always wanted this i've always wanted this and there's a lot of people like logistically it's very difficult i understand that logistically it may not be possible yeah well hang on we're not building the pyramids here you know the egyptians did that five thousand years ago or did they you know it can be done i know it's hard but it could be done you know and even if you have to leave moto 3 and moto 2 at home that week and f2 that's fine and if you're looking at countries that could pull it off i mean the middle eastern countries would be all over it and they have the money to throw at it. From a pure sporting perspective, I'd like to see it somewhere maybe like Silverstone. Hosts both events really, really well every single year and has two start-finish straights with two pit lanes. That works. That makes perfect sense. So that's, of all the things I want out of Liberty Media, that is the one. I want the joint Grand Prix. And, and I think, you know, it's hard to pull off, but, you know, you can do it. It's not impossible. And also, like, some of the stuff that, you know, you're not, like I said, you're not building a mega structure here. It's just like hosting two races for two different things. It's fine. You can do it. So let's get that done. And if there's anything here, guys, with Liberty Media, you know, with this acquisition by Liberty Media that I've missed, I had a lot of this stuff on my list here that I didn't, you know, some of the stuff I didn't even get to. And there may be things that I'm not considering, negative things or positive. Uh, so let me know about them in the comments. And if there's any F1 guys watching who want to give their perspective on it, you know, in the comments or want to have a chat to me about it, I'm... I'd love to have you on here and we'll do a little webcam chat or something like that. That'd be great. And just to get that perspective of it, you know, from, you know, the F1 has grown enormously since Liberty Media took over, you know, so obviously that's always good. Your sport's getting bigger, but, you know, give us, you know, maybe you might have some negative aspects to it that you don't enjoy. I'd love to hear from you guys and, and, and hear about that. So that'd be great. And thanks again for watching, everyone. We will see you on the next one. If you enjoyed this, there's some other videos going to be on the screen here that you can click on. They're all great. Just, just watch them. They're, they're brilliant. Catch you on the next one, guys.